depression, anxiety, medical usage, and the help it provides, all under the case of marijuana. We are left with the question every day, should marijuana be legalized? Marijuana is a slow but terrible drug. It will take down your body over time more and more. But does it help? Can using it medically help save lives? Hi, I'm Tyler Crow, and I will be presenting my TED Talk to you about marijuana and how it should be legal. Of course it helps medically, and it can save lives. Marijuana should be illegal for many reasons unless it is being used to help medically prescribed by a doctor. Medical marijuana can help you and loose marijuana can hurt you. You should be aware of how and why it should be legalized medically. This is why you should care strongly about my TED Talk. My first point to show the reasoning behind this statement is the physical effects that marijuana presents. A source revealing this point is pens.org. This source shows that changes to the human body have been observed to last most of the time throughout your whole life if non-medical marijuana among someone is used a lot. An analogy to go with this is that marijuana compromises your brain in general as well as compromises the neuro side of your brain even more. These two have a lot in common, but the brain generally is not as compromised as the neuro side is. The neuro side of your brain can, can become irrational as well as weak. You can lose IQ and become different in the way you view your life. This point shows the clear danger marijuana has on your brain. It summarizes that if loose marijuana among someone is used by people on just a daily basis, you can alter your brain heavily. Next, this brings me to the fact that marijuana is very addictive and it can heavily change the way you live. Businessinsider.com states that the addiction of marijuana could be compared to other drugs, especially a group of drugs called opioids. Opioids are drugs similar to marijuana that cause a quick high and change you both physically and mentally over time. These drugs are compared to marijuana because of the addiction level they both create. Although marijuana is generally not as bad for you, its addiction is just as bad as these other drugs. This can lead to getting into worse drugs over time, and drugs over time leads to serious health issues. Even just marijuana can cause the risks of lung disease, as well as a daily cough, an increased heart rate, and lots of more. Although marijuana on a free hand can be bad, using it medically is a totally different story. HarvardHealth.org unwraps an antidote from TedTalks.com. Dr. Alan Shankford, who had who told a story about a mom named Paige who had experienced her five-year-old daughter having seizures a ton. She would try different things, but many did not work. Finally, she met with an expert, and medical marijuana was prescribed as a last resort for the poor dying child. This worked. Paige's daughter recovered, showing proof that although marijuana is generally a bad drug, the medical side of it has great potential. This explains that medical marijuana should be the only exemption. Next, Healthline.org states that medical marijuana is also been proven to minimize cancer treatment side effects. Some of these include things like loss of appetite, muscle pain, stress, and the use of things like ibuprofen, which produce tons of negative side effects. This is extremely important because cancer treatment causes many bad side effects. And if marijuana could help it, that is life-changing for many lives across the globe. Something that is crucial is CBD. That is something found in medical marijuana and is thought to highlight reducing things like inflammation. This practically means that it can bend inflammatory things such as Crohn's disease, intolerable bowel disease, and rheumatoid. Your inflammatory system is your body's way of reacting to bad things. So when your body does not respond well to things, medical marijuana can take over and start taking away the pain slowly. This is all stated by Healthline.org. Medical marijuana in this point is showing how it could take away the pain without causing additional problems. This is absolutely amazing. A source showing a visual of marijuana usage, but that is not for medical usage, and what it does after it gets into your body is VeryWellHealth.com. As you can see, this image shows what happens after the effects and stages of what marijuana does after it enters your system. It explains how marijuana can negatively affect you. Even within a quick inhale of marijuana, your systems will get worse and worse as chemicals in marijuana will break them down. The second you inhale these chemicals, you will weaken your respiratory systems as well as damage your airways, which are the ways you can get into your lungs and your lungs and the way you breathe. That is all your respiratory system. You can also get cell damage as well as get dysfunctions in your immune system. 
The last and substantial point leading to marijuana being illegal without medical prescription is the fact that secondhand marijuana is also super dangerous. Verywellhealth.com states that marijuana among the secondhand is proved to have some of the same toxic chemicals in marijuana and their users, which in higher amounts sometimes on the secondhand, which is absolutely mind-blowing. This shows the devastating truth that so much more people are in danger of getting hurt by marijuana than just the consumer. This is yet a great reason people should care about marijuana and how it should be legalized. My next point is I'm going to focus on the mental side of marijuana and what it does mentally to you. So marijuana should be legalized just for medical purposes. And so it gets into your brain and the mental side of you so much. CDC.gov states that the source states that freehand marijuana can cause disorientation, unpleasant feelings, disturbing thoughts, as well as weird feelings, and lastly, paranoia. It explains that when marijuana enters your system daily or even just normally, it can cause problems that snowball bigger and bigger until you become mentally insane. This clearly shows that the mental risks of this drug are crazy. Next, Rethink.org shows that people who use marijuana are more prone to having hallucinations under the disease psychosis. This is a huge problem. Psychosis is having a disease where it can be a major problem, especially because it indicates that your life will be completely changed while having this disease because it's temporary. Psychosis is where you don't know what's going on. You see things, you hear things, but it's very temporary. It happens as you're very high. CDC.gov also states that not only does marijuana produce short-term temporarily mental issues, they create long-lasting mental disorders as well. It states things like a disease called schizophrenia, which is similar to psychosis, but it has to do with things like you see tons of things and you hear a lot of things, but it's not temporarily and it happens forever. This is an even bigger deal than short-term diseases like psychosis. Not only are you going to experience a terrible condition for the rest of your life, you're going to have to go through insanely dangerous scenarios. If you hear or see things and you don't know if they're real, you're going to have to put yourself in scenarios to try to fix those problems, and that can be extremely dangerous. Even if you get schizophrenia and you stop doing marijuana, you will still hear and see things, which is a ton of trouble. Also, another point from the awesome source of CDC.gov showed that a danger appeal to this point, as well as an amazing statistic. Research from science estimated that approximately 3 in 10 people who use marijuana have marijuana use disorder. This is an extremely alarming to society because it shows that marijuana can become legal to all. All these statistics will get higher, leaving our society weaker. Marijuana use disorder is the addiction of marijuana and how it takes over your body. Next, healthfully.com makes a great point that leaving society higher is very good. So by making it lower, it's terrible. And the way they show this is a statistic by showing that by showing studies that prove that marijuana consumption is paired with IQ lossage, especially in teens, but even as adults. A certain study conducted by the time a teen who reaches adulthood who uses marijuana regularly has lost an average IQ of 5.8. Also, regular adults who use marijuana are losing IQ a ton as well just not as heavily because their brains are done developing. This shows that not only is non-prescriptive marijuana causing bad effects to you, it is literally making you dumber. Lastly, another source talking about the mental toll it takes on adolescents is Marijuana Medline Plus. A value that teens and their families, especially parents, share is growing up to your full potential and being the best person you can possibly be. According to the source, marijuana among teens is somewhat common if teens get into it. Because their brains are so easily influenced, it's likely addiction will start because of this. This can be a huge toll in teens' lives. Also, teens are more likely to get addicted due to the lack of knowledge and brain development since their brains will be still developing. This could take a huge mental part on teens' brains. The other problem is that if a teen gets ended up hooked on marijuana, they will likely become growth stunted and not only be able to learn a minimized amount, they will not grow up to their full potential. Finally, my last point 
to prove that marijuana should only be legal for medical purposes is that it's an appealing drug to teens and causes a ton of issues. I'm going to be talking about teens a ton and how it affects them. My first point to show this is from MedlinePlus.com and it shows that teens are an important and play a figure and an important role in keeping their generation stable. Marijuana can be dangerous because although it is a less likely drug to get you dangerously high, you still can. Side effects of being high can lead to more drugs or bad decisions, which can easily end up in death or serious injury. Due to depression or being high, this shows the danger of the Gen X generation and what can happen to teens if marijuana is legalized. Teens are our future, and we do not want our future to be doomed. We would not want that. VeryWellHealth.com states the point that we could be dooming generations soon to come. Recent studies have shown strong opinions and facts to prove that teens have been known to have deductible amounts of marijuana in them if a heavy user is around because of both secondhand and teens trying marijuana for themselves. This hints at secondhand, but mostly focuses on the fact that teens are influenced by figures in their life doing marijuana and then trying it for themselves and creating more and more addicts. This is, an in, this is a huge problem because not only are teens going to be doing marijuana by making it more legal, creating a higher amount of marijuana addicted users will create general problems in our society and generations to come. Also, according to AmericanAddictionCenters.org, if you suspect or find that a teen you know is taken care of by um, a medical hospital or suffering from marijuana, please report that to a professional immediately. Your teen's special abuse pattern should be specialized for them. So this statement of this research mostly focuses on what you have to do if you notice that a loved one is struggling with marijuana consumption. This statement, however, says how each teen's abuse patterns are different. This basically means that teens who are struggling with marijuana are struggling differently than other people, which is very dangerous. This shows that each person's way of struggling can be different, and society itself does not want to deal with a lot of different problems involving marijuana, especially in teens. After this, I want to point out there are states who are already allowing marijuana medically and non-medically. Here's the image that shows all of this. And this picture is from WISLAW Journal and shows that all 12 of these states have legalized marijuana in their country in some way. If a drug starts to become legal in just a few more states, it can spread like a virus or a wildfire all across our country. And if states allow marijuana, this means that all marijuana related incidents and diseases will go up, leaving us just that much lower as a society. As more states come in, as more states come in, we're going to gain less, 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 less society. It's going to get worse. To take an emotional view on this topic, smash.gov marijuana highlights how the teen years are years for exploring, risk-taking, growth, into becoming an adult. Certain things that are considered risky, like marijuana, is to the point where it's not okay, meaning it's harmful or stunting your growth. This means that not only do we want our teens to learn and to become great adults when they're older, but we want the American generation to stay the same in the way our generation already is. This drug stunts growth and causes just so many issues. This is yet another reason marijuana should be illegal to the public. Another harmful thing is that teens are generally doing is they're coming up with new strategies to do these drugs and all these things that they find out. They're trying to say, oh, this thing is old, so let me create a new dopamine strategy to get something to make me even more happier. So dopamine is the chemical, the main chemical key for happiness. So this source, Marijuana MedLab, shows that teens will mostly get hurt or go down the wrong path if they do not follow precaution when dealing with marijuana. There are already so many ways to do marijuana, and since the teen brain is still developing, teens will do things to make it worse. This is just like a group of teens that are currently doing and have invented in the past two years. They were sick of drinking beer and whiskey, and they wanted to do something to make their dopamine higher. So they put dry ice in whiskey and beer and tried to smoke it. This is a terrible idea, because not only do they get drunk so much faster, it was extremely dangerous. A lot of them died doing it. This is, this is the fear that teens will do too. Some people might think that marijuana gives you short-term happiness. However, this is not the case. It will not give you happiness forever. Drugs give you short-term dopamine. 
Dopamine, like I said, is the chemical for happiness. It's meant pure happiness. It's not pure happiness. And it's not getting it from real happiness, like family or loving somebody. Over time, drugs like marijuana, which can be commonly used regularly, prove to make you sad because it alters your brain. According to NIDA.gov, it also makes you depressed, which are found that drugs over time make you want them. It feels like you need them, so it makes you even more sad. Finally, we circle back to what all of this means and represents. This all proves the point that marijuana should be legal for medical use prescribed by a doctor only. A good solution to this problem is to educate all states with the federal government about medical marijuana and make states allow it only for medical use. We can try to ban marijuana in many states and protest and setting up facilities for people to teach about this harmful drug. Another solution is to have the school system teach more and more about drug antics, especially marijuana, so teens know to stay away from it. We love and value our teens, our society, and life and our dignity. Let's not let it go to shame. Life, liberty, and the American dream, don't let, Amer don't let marijuana make a scene. Spread the word until it's heard. Make a difference so we can live in peace without chaos on the streets. I'm Tyler Kroll, and that's all.